ಕಾಶೋಯಾನಂದನ ಪ್ರಜಾನರಂಜನ ಕಾಶೋಯಾನಂದನ ಪ್ರಜಾನರಂಜನ ಯಮುನಾ ಚೀರ ವನಚಾರಿ ಯಮುನ ಚೀರ ವನಚಾರಿ ಅಯ ರಾಧ ಮಾಧವ ತುಂಜ ಬಿಹಾರಿ ಜಯ ರಾಧ ಮಾಧವ ಕುಂಜ ಬಿಹಾರಿ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ನಾರಾಯಣ ನಮಸ್ಕೃಚ ನರಂ ಚೈವ ನರೋತ್ತಮ ದೇವಿ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ವಿಯಸ ತೋರ್ಜಯ ಮುದೀರಯತ್ ನಷ್ಟಪ್ರೇಷು ಅಬಧೇಶು ನಿತ್ಯಂ ಭಗವತ ಸೇವಯ ಭಾಗವತೀಯತಮ ಶ್ಲೋಕೆ ಭಕ್ತಿರ್ಭಾವಜೀನ ಇಷ್ಟಿಕಿ ಓಮ ಜ್ಞಾನತಿಮಿರಂದಸಲಕಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರ್ ಉನ್ಮಿಲಿತಂಗೇನ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುವೇ ನಮಃ ವಿ ರೀಡಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಿ ಏಟೀನ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಆಫ್ ಭಗವತ್ ಪುರಾಣ ಕ್ಯಾಂಟೋ ಒನ್ Uh, text 9 and 10 i'll just do 9 and then we'll chant 10 in it together upavarnitam etadvaha punyam parikshitam maya vasudeva katopetam akyanam yada prichita o sages as you did ask me Now I have described almost everything regarding the narrations about Lord Krishna in connection with the history of the pious Maharaj Prikit. <clears throat> Srila Prabhupada's purport. Srimad Bhagavatam is the history of the activities of the Lord and the activities of the Lord are performed in relation with the devotees of the Lord. Therefore, the history of the devotees is not different from the history of lord krishna's activities <clears throat> a devotee of the lord regards both the activities of the lord and those of his pure devotees on an equal level for they are all transcendental ya ya katha bhagavata ಕಥಾನಿಯೋರು ಕರ್ಮನ ಗುಣಕಮಶ್ರಯ ಪುಂಬಿ ಸಂಸೇವ್ಯಾಸ್ತಾಬುಭೂಷುಭಿ ಯಾ ಕಥಾ ಭಗವತ ಕಥಾನಿಯೋರು ಕರ್ಮನ ಗುಣಕಾಮಶ್ರಯ ಪುಂಬಿ ಸಂಸೇವ್ಯಾಸ್ತಾಬುಭೂಷುಭಿ ಯಾ ಕಥಾ ಭಗವತ ಕಥನೀಯೋರು ಕಾಮನ ಗುಣಕಾಮಶ್ರಯ ಪುಂಬಿ ಸಂಶಯಾವ್ಯಸ್ತುಭೂಷಿ 
ಕಥಾನಿಯೋರುಕಾಮನಾಕಾಮಶಯಾಪುಂಬಿ ಸಂಸೇವ್ಯಾಸ್ತಾಪುಷುಭಿ ಯಾಗವತ ಕಥಾನಿಯೂರು ಕಾಮನ ಸಂಸೇವ್ಯಾಸ್ತಾಪುಭೂಷುಭಿ ಲೇಡೀಸ್ ಯಾಗವತ ಕಥಾನಿಕಾಮನ ಗುಣಕಾಮಶಯ ಪುಂಬಿ ಸಂಸೇವ್ಯಾಸ್ತು ಬುಭೂಷುಭಿ ಯಾಗವತ ಅಥಾನಿಯೋ ಕಾಮನ ಗುಣಕಾಮಶಯ ಪುಂಬಿ ಸಂಸೇವ್ಯಾಸ್ತಾಪುಭೂಷುಭಿ ಕಥಾಭಗವತ ಕಥಾನಿಯೋ ಕಾಮನ ಗುಮಕಾಮಶಯ ಪುಂಬಿ ಸಂಸೇವ್ಯಾಸ್ತು ಪ್ರಭುಶಿಭಿ ಯಾ ವಾಟ್ ಎವರ್ ಯಾ ಎನ್ ವಾಟ್ ಸೋ ಎವರ್ ಕಥ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ಸ್ ಭಗವತ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ಪರ್ಸನಾಲಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಹೆಡ್ ಕಥನೀಯ ವರ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಸ್ಪೋಕನ್ ಬೈ ಮೀ ಊರುಕಾಮನಃ of him who acts wonderfully guna <coughs> transcendental qualities karma <coughs> uncommon deeds ashraya <coughs> involving whom be by persons samshevya ought to be heard taha all of them bubu shubihi by those who want their own welfare those who are desirous of achieving complete perfection in life <coughs> must submissively hear all topics <coughs> that are connected with the transcendental activities and qualities <coughs> of the personality of godhead who acts wonderfully please repeat those who are desirous of achieving complete perfection in life must submissively hear all topics that are connected with the transcendental activities and qualities <coughs> of the personality of godhead who acts wonderfully shila prabhat's purport <clears throat> the systematic hearing of the transcendental activities qualities and names of lord shri krishna pushes one towards eternal life <clears throat> systematic hearing means knowing him gradually in truth and fact and this knowing him in truth and fact means attaining eternal life as stated in the bhagavad gita <clears throat> such transcendental glorified activities of lord shri krishna are the prescribed remedy for counteracting the process of birth death old age and disease which are considered to be material awards 
for the conditioned living being. The culmination of such a perfectional stage of life is the goal of human life and the attainment of transcendental bliss. <clears throat> So, <clears throat> unfortunately, in our modern society today, the ethos of human society is acquisition and egoism. <clears throat> so their goal in life is economic advancement, material advancement for sense gratification. However, Veda Vyas, Sukadeva Goswami, he quotes Veda Vyas here, <clears throat> in the first canto, the dharmasya hi apavargasya, <clears throat> nartasya dharmaikantasya kamo labdaya hi shmitaha. That the goal of human life is apavarga or uh, moksha, liberation, at least moksha, but in devotional service. So, <clears throat> apavarga, pavarga comes from five roots, pa, fa, ba, baha, and ma. <clears throat> the first is pavitra, means people work really hard. They work hard in life, and they think that's, that's the purpose of life, work hard. And Rishabhadev says simply, for the pleasures available to the animals that eat stool. <laughs> Nayam deho deha bhajam riloke kastan kaman. Kastan kaman arhade vidbujamye. You're working hard just for pleasures which are available to the pigs. In other words, you're not much more than a pig. Svavid rahostrakarai samsuta purusha pushu. In the second canto, we hear about. <clears throat> Um, the science of self-realization, the process of self-realization. In that chapter, Sukadev Goswami describes materialistic man, and they're compared to dogs, hogs, asses, and camels. And we know that in the Bhagavad Gita, <laughs> Krishna says, Namam duskritina mudha prapadyante naradhama. So these are the naradhamas. They're highly educated. They're very advanced materially. They are very proud that they can build rockets and bombs and, you know, 747 jets and submarines and all kinds of sophisticated material machines. <clears throat> but they're Naradhama. They're the lowest of <laughs> the lowest of mankind. They're condemned as dogs, hogs, asses, and camels. <clears throat> Naham jatu patur peshu svavidvrao kustakai samsuta purusha pushu nayat karna pato peto jatu nama gadagaja. Their ears are never filled with the transcendental topics of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The, <clears throat> the activities, the form, uh, the beauty of Krishna, his transcendental devotees. His transcendental pastimes in the spiritual world, um, his beautiful dress, his wonderful relationships with the inhabitants of Vrindavan. These are all described by the great sages and by the, recently by the six Goswamis of Vrindavan and <clears throat> by our Acharyas. They describe these transcendental activities of the Lord, <clears throat> which are actually. <clears throat> The cause of purifying one's heart. Cheto darpanam arjanam bhava maha davagni nirvapanam shreya kaivava chavanji kavitaranam vidyavadhu jivanam anandam buddhi vardanam. Everyone's trying to get this pleasure. They're always hankering for the, the nectar. Everyone's longing for this. But it comes from hearing and chanting about the glories, uh, activities, form, and qualities and the attributes of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Sri Krishna. <clears throat> Krishna's pastimes are uh, nitya lila, eternal, they're going on. And um, <clears throat> Krishna Varnam Twisha Krishna Sangopanga Straparsadam. Krishna decides that in Kali Yuga, if I come as Krishna, 
then we know he has to vinashaya <laughs> chaduskritam. He has to kill everyone. Because everyone's like Jagai and Mare. They're all Yavanas and Malechas. Kiratu Hunandra Pulinda Pulkasham Birashamba Yavanakashariya. They're all low born. Even the so called Brahmins are eating cows. Yes. <laughs> all the so called highest class of people, they're all eating animals and, and doing all sinful activities. So he comes this age as a very merciful personality. He comes in the mood of Srimati Radharani. <clears throat> Uh, Krishna Varnam Twisha Krishna Sangopanga Straparshanam. His only weapons are his associates Nityananda, Avetacharya, Gadadhar Pandit, and Srivas Thakur. They appear right here in Sri Mayapur. God Himself. <coughs> so here it's stated <coughs> that the, the great devotees of the Lord, <coughs> they're always happy. Uh, Jara Marna Mokshaya Mama Yashanti Upash Yashanti Te Te Brahma Tad Vidur Te Brahma Tad Vidur Krishnam Adyat Makarma Shak. Anyway, in that verse, it's described that uh, Krishna's devotees, because they were uh, glor always glorifying the Lord with transcendental prose and poetry. Adhyatma karma chakilam, that they uh, transcend the modes of material nature, they're transcendental. They become free from this cycle, this, these fourfold miseries, janma mrityu jira vyadi. The um, <clears throat> described by Krishna, the Bhagavad Gita, the one who recognizes real knowledge, jara marana mokshaya, they become transcendental, they, they step over the head of death like Juva Maharaj. When death came to meet him, he stepped on his head and entered into the, um, the Vipassana, the, the, the airplane of the Vaikuntha parties. And they took Juva Maharaj and his mother back to Vaikuntha, stepping on the head. Chamashitaye pada palava plavam mahat padam punya yashomarari bhavam budir yastam padam 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 yad vipadam natesham that the entire ocean of birth and death is transformed into as much water that can fit into the hoof of a calf. That is the promise of the great Acharyas that simply uh, take shelter of Murari, the enemy of the Mura demon. We know that Krishna took Satyabhama and they went to the, the abode of Bomasura, <clears throat> who had captivated, he put in captive 16,000 princesses. And Krishna came there riding on Garuda with Satyabhama. And Mura came out. This is a very highly fortified uh, fort. There were electric wires. There was poisonous gases. There was a huge moat full of disgusting things and dangerous creatures. And the Mura demon was sitting, lying there, waiting to guard him, guarding the the great fort of Bomasura. <laughs> so he came out with his three heads and he had trident and he was roaring like a lion and Krishna with his arrows filled his mouth with arrows and killed the Mura demon. <clears throat> so if you take shelter of Murari, the enemy of the Mura demon, then you can go beyond this ocean of birth and death, go beyond the Riraj river the Viraj River surrounds the material world and separates the spiritual world from the material world. <clears throat> so, Chaktvadeham Punar Janma Naiti. One who knows Janma Karma Chame Devyam Evam Yoviti Tatvara. One who knows in truth that Lord Krishna, the son of Maharaj Nanda, the son of Vasudeva and Devaki, the one who is always accompanied by his flute and who is surrounded by loving devotees and who engages in extraordinary loving pastimes with his devotees, and who has extraordinary beauty, that is Lord Krishna. <clears throat> One who knows him at the time of death, even a little bit. Prabhupada promised that Krishna will come and take you back home, back to Godhead. That is the promise, the guarantee of Srila Prabhupada. <laughs> 
Yeah. Antakali chamameva smaran muktvakalevaram. At the time of death, if we remember the holy name of Krishna, I was there when Srila Prabhupada was uh, departing to the spiritual world. And the final words he said was, Hare Krishna. And he left, he left <laughs> for Goloka Vrindavan. <laughs> <clears throat> so that is the success of life. And that is what Srila Prabhupada wants us to attain. He, um, it begins with <clears throat> Adoshada Tata Sadhu Sangha by having some faith in the practice of devotional service and then associating with devotees. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> unfortunately, the majority of the population today, <clears throat> they're simply interested in what they call nescient activities, material activities. Therefore, the Ishupanishad condemns them. Andhatamasapravishanti ye vidamupashate. That those who cultivate Nessian activities, materialist activities, <clears throat> they're simply suffering in this life and they will suffer so many millions of births in their next life. That is guaranteed. Krishna says to Arjuna, Tanaham dushata kruran samsareshu naradamam. The, the lowest of man, they simply believe that there's no God. There's no need to glorify God. Let's glorify some material person. Prabhupada said that the materialistic people, the people in the mode of passion, they worship a demoniac person like Hitler. They worship someone like Hitler. <clears throat> and um, so they take birth again and again. Shipamiya jashum ashubama suishu eviyunishu. Krishna says they cast them into lower species of life. Birth after birth after birth. Chintam apir aparimeyam cha. Pralayantam upashitaha. They think that simply to enjoy their senses until the end of time is the ultimate goal of human life. Therefore, uh, they take birth again and again in the horrible species, lower species of life. That is described throughout the Bhagavad Gita, one who dies in the mode of ignorance. Tata pralinas tamasa mudho jonishu jayate. They took birth in the animal kingdom. That is their predicament in life. So we simply ask people, Lord Nichananda is simply asking, Jaga and Madai, simply asking, there, please chant, just take, I beg you, the only alms I beg you is to take this holy name of the Lord and chant it and come to the point of offenseless chanting. Offenseless chanting means Raghunuga Bhakti. When you're spontaneously always remembering Krishna and when you chant his holy name, you taste the nectar of his holy name. Rupa Goswami says, I can't even imagine how much nectar this holy name possesses. Simply by chanting it, a person who chants it purely desires millions of tongues to chant this name, Krishna. <clears throat> and one desires millions of ears so he can hear the holy name of Krishna. Are we there yet? <laughs> <clears throat> feeling your separation, I'm feeling uh, a moment to be like 12 years or more. My tears are flowing from my eyes like torrents of rain. When will my hairs stand on end when chanting the holy name of the Lord? It's there. Krishna's potency is there. Uh, in the holy name of Krishna, all the potencies of the Lord are there. The entire Goloka Vrindavan is there. Everything is there in the holy name of Krishna. That is Krishna's potency. Natasya karyam karanam cha vidyate natachamascha vyadikascha drusyate sarvasya shaktir vividhai vishuyate subhavaki jnana bala kriya cha 
it says in one of the Upanishads that Krishna is multi, he's, multi, he's omnipotent. He has so many potencies and all those potencies that he has, creative potency, uh, the potency to take a seed and write all the instructions inside the seed. It's called DNA, <laughs> instruction. Who put it there? Krishna's unlimited intelligence. And you get a big banyan tree with many, many seeds that produces more millions of banyan trees. He has so much Shakti, infinite Shakti. Therefore, uh, he's known as inconceivable. Achintya guna swarupam govinda mari purusham tamaham bhajami. He has uh, inconceivable qualities. <clears throat> so that in all the Shaktis that Krishna has, Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who has disguised Krishna. He's disguised Krishna. <laughs> He's put all the potencies, all his potency, without any effort, Natasya Karyam Karanam Chavidya, without any effort, he's creating trillions of universes. Trillions. And the scientists are breaking their brains, trying to figure out what is the origin of the universe, what is the origin of life. They have no clue. They're clueless because they're atheistic. Na ham prakasha sarvasya yoga maya samavritaha mudho yam nabijana ti mame bhya paramavyam. He says, no one can know me. They cannot know me. I'm covered by my yoga maya potency. Mudho yam. He calls them asses. Donkeys. <laughs> maya paridagyana. Their intellect is stolen by illusion. They have intelligence. But because they're subject to mental speculation. <laughs> maya paridagyana. They think, oh, I can figure it out myself. <laughs> and the more they try to figure out, the more deeper they go with their instruments, their imperfect instruments, microscopes, Hubble telescope, Mr. Hubble <laughs> in California has a big telescope, trying to find out. <laughs> I was with Prabhupada in Portland, Oregon in 1972. Portland, Oregon. And Prabhupada was walking through the park <clears throat> And there were some ducks and geese and some frogs. <laughs> this brother said, <laughs> frog-like man. He said, what is Mr. Frog saying today? He always was questioning, what are the scientists, what's, what's their latest theory? <laughs> what is Mr. Frog? <laughs> he says, they're just like frogs in a well, trying to measure the entire universe. Like the frog, he's blowing himself up more and more, the size of the well, and then he explodes. <clears throat> So, <clears throat> um, they cannot know Krishna. Name Prakasha Sarvasya. They're defeated. Moga Shamoga Karmana, Moga Jnana Vichetistaha, Raksha Shim Asurim Chaiva, Prakriti Mohinim Shitaha. Krishna says, I, I destroy them. I, uh, they meet with defeat. Ba, ba, ma. <laughs> pa, ba, pa, pa. So, Parabhavas tavada bodha jato. The word pa, ba, comes from parabhavas. Krishna says they get defeated by, the, by their intense attempts to enjoy this material world. Their overwhelming attempt to try and figure everything out and control the world and control everything in the world. They meet with parabhavas tavada bodha jato yavanna jagyasata atmatadvam. They meet with defeat. They're defeated. Because they never inquire. Atato Brahma Jigyasa. What am I? And where does all this come from? And who is the original? Who's the fountainhead? They have no idea that the Supreme Personality of Godhead effortlessly is producing all these universes and everything from the pores of his body. They're all coming out, and with their instruments, they say, oh yeah, some red shift, there was a red shift, and then the universe is expanding. So they, um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, <coughs> they speculate about the, uh, the source of the universe. <coughs> I have to power off. 
They speculate about the source of the universe. They call it a Big Bang. So they meet with defeat. Moga Shamoga Karmana, Moga Jnana Vichesthasa, Rakshasi Masarum Jaiva, Prakriti Moinim Shita. They meet with defeat. Pa, Fa, Ba, Ba, and Ma. <laughs> fenila. Fenila. The word fenila means frothing at the mouth. That the materialistic people, they work hard and they froth at the mouth, just like we see the donkey or the horse. It's pulling, it's pulling heavy loads. And uh, <laughs> Prophet says the donkey is so foolish, mudha, <laughs> that there's grass everywhere, but his master is giving him grass, the washerman, and he's carrying huge bundles. So like that, the foolish people are working hard. And when we offer them, please take a book about Krishna. Please learn about Krishna. Krishna, Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Lord of the heart. I'm busy. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm very busy. Loba pravritim aramba karmana shamaspiha, mode of passion. Loba pravritim aramba, very materialistic, very greedy. Aramba karmana shamaspiha. They work like asses, trying to get more and more and more. Like race horses, they're running here and there. Prophet said, they wake up early in the morning and take a train. And, and spend hours on the train, work hard, and then after four, eight hours, they go back on the train, go home, and they pay the bills, <laughs> and they try to enjoy some sense gratification, and they sleep, and then they do it again and again and again. Punat, punat, charvita, charvananam. Chewing that which has already been chewed. The animals are struggling, to um, eat, sleep, mate, and defend. And the materialistic human beings are also struggling. Ahara nidra baya mutunya. That's it. <clears throat> so here, <clears throat> the uh, advice given by Sukadev Goswami, and here Sutta Goswami is advising that <clears throat> your whole life should be filled satatam kirtayantumam yitantascha jridavrataha. Always glorifying the Lord with praise. Always glorifying the holy name of the Lord. Um, <clears throat> Deriving great pleasure and satisfaction from Krishna Kata. What is Lord Chaitanya doing during the Rathiyatra festival? We just had Rathiyatra. <laughs> He's dancing in ecstasy. And he's exhibiting symptoms of love of God. By dancing and chanting, there were seven groups in the Rathiyatra procession. Three huge carts, Jagannath, Balaram, and Subhadra. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was dancing in ecstasy surrounded by his devotees. And he became so ecstatic by seeing Lord Jagannath <clears throat> that he, f he went into ecstatic symptoms. He started manifesting ecstatic symptoms of love for Krishna, although he's Krishna himself. He's tasting the love. He tells Radharani, he sends a message to Radharani that <clears throat> actually tells her, he meets her in Kurukshetra, <clears throat> which is Rathiyatra. He said, my dear Radharani, the inhabitants of Vrindavan are my life and soul. And amongst the inhabitants of Vrindavan, the gopis are the very life of my, of my, uh, are the very life and soul of me. But you, Radharani, you're most dear to me, and you're the life of my very life. So in this mood, in the mood of Radharani, he's tasting this mahabhav, this love for Krishna. Prima Pumarta Mahan, the goal of human life, within the soul, within each of us, there is dormant love for Krishna. Prabhupada said, the goal of life, your life, is how to love God. That is the best religion, right? Dharma projita kaitravotra paramo nirmatsaranam satam. Kicking out all materially motivated religions, the goal of life is how to, the goal of Dharma, how to love God, ahaitukiya pratiyata, yayatma samprasidati, without any interruption and without any drop of motive. No drops of motive, even within the society of devotees, sometimes we cultivate motives. 
<clears throat> but Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, na dhanam, na janam, na sundarim. I don't want any followers. I don't want any power. Followers means power, right? <laughs> I'm the president of the United States. I got lots of power. I'm the president of India. I got lots of power. <laughs> na dhanam. I don't want wealth. I don't want power. Followers. I don't want to enjoy sense gratification. Na sundarim. Like that. So, <clears throat> that is love of God. <clears throat> So Lord Chaitanya is dancing in front of Lord Jagannath at the Rathi Yatra festival and tears are flowing from his eyes like torrents of rain, like a syringe, like, and he's showering all the devotees with his tears and his hairs are standing on end. He resembles a cotton tree which has big thorns on it. So he's experiencing these symptoms of love of God, perspiration, his, uh, the pores in his skin are erupting and blood is sometimes flowing from his body. These are, these are extreme symptoms of love of God. And he wants to give it to you. <laughs> he, wants, he wants you to experience this. Sometimes we saw Srila Prabhupada, when he was, came to America one time in Atlanta, he actually went into a trance and became very, very bright, very light. Sometimes Prabhupada, when he was here in Mayapur, in the 70s, he was, he was chanting, Jairadama Adava, and he, he couldn't carry on. Gadgada. His voice was choked up while chanting the holy names of the Lord. So it's available. Prabhupada is the embodiment of love for Krishna, and he's telling us it's available. <laughs> Simply have to Utsahan Nischayat Dharyat Tat Tat Karma Pavartanat Sangatyaga Sutovrite Sadvir Bhakti Prishishiti. Six things you need to be enthusiastic, patient, confident, uh, avoid materialistic association, fall in the footsteps of the great devotees of the Lord. <clears throat> like these are described by Rupa Goswami, Prabhupada, the father of pure devotional service, father of devotional service. So that is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu dancing at the Rathi Yatra festival and benedicting all his devotees with love of God. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> And uh, even Maharaj Prada Puruja was given his mercy, although he said Maharaj Prada Puruja is a pure devotee of the Lord, but externally he seems to be a king with wealth, followers, power, beautiful queens, right? So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, <laughs> when Lord Chaitanya was dancing, he fell down, and um, uh, Swarup Damodar and uh, Govinda were somewhere else, and Maharaj Prada Puruja picked Lord Chaitanya up. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu externally said, Oh no, a materialistic person has, has touched me. This Kinchanasya Bhagavat Bhajanum Mukasya Param Param Jigamashur Bhavasagarasya. He quoted that verse for someone who's given up this material world to be in association with a materialistic person, like drinking poison, right? <clears throat> it's the most condemned thing. But internally, actually, Lord Chaitanya was very pleased with Maharaj Prada Puruja because he had taken a humble position and he was sweeping in front of Lord Jagannath. He became a sweeper. He's a proprietor of the entire province of Orissa. And he's the entire, the proprietor of Jagannath Temple. He's a king of Orissa, big man. <laughs> so many elephants and wealth and gold. And <laughs> but he was uh, so humble that he said, if I don't get the mercy of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, if I don't get his darshan, if I don't get an interview with Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, I'm going to give up my entire kingdom. I'm going to become a Kapalika yogi, wearing a little conch thing in my ear, and I'm just going to go begging door to door. He was going to give up his entire kingdom, and everyone was freaking out. Lord Nichananda went to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and said, it's very dangerous if you don't have a leader. Everything will be chaos. <laughs> so Lord Chaitanya's heart was melted by, by the humility of Maharaj Prada Puruja. So we have two minutes left. Uh, if there's any comments or questions. Um, <clears throat> this is the week of the Jagannath Leela and Jagannath pastimes. Hare Krishna. Prabhu, yes. Mishra Narayan Prabhu.
Can you tell us a little more about Prabhupada in Portland, Oregon? In Portland? <laughs> uh, that was June of 1972, the first week of June. And we went, we went down to Portland. We were, we were from Vancouver. <clears throat> Dharmatma was there. Rita was there. These are well-known devotees. Rita lives here. So Srila Prabhupada came there <clears throat> to Portland. Um, the temple president was um, Donavir. Donavir Swami. Donavir Maharaj. He was then a Grihasta. Very charismatic personality. <laughs> and, you know, we were going out in the parks in Portland chanting Hare Krishna. <clears throat> and many, many devotees came. I mean, that was, the whole, the whole movement was taking off in 1972, like so many young people were joining the movement. Um, it was huge amounts. So every, every day, thousands, hundreds were joining, practically speaking, tens, twenties, hundreds, I don't know, but a lot. And Prabhupada was like a great hero. <laughs> so, you know, the whole thing exploded. In 71, 72, things started really ex mushrooming. And so when Prabhupada came to Portland, it was just a small house down, near downtown Portland. It was like an older home that devotees were renting. And so, <laughs> so many traveling vans. We used to travel in vans all across the continent, basically across America, distributing, chanting Hare Krishna, and distributing, by, at that time, more back to Godheads and small books. So when Prabhupada got there to the airport, he, was, he seemed to be very, very grave. Because even in the beginning of 72, we were focused on chanting for six, seven, eight hours a day in the streets and distributing small books and back to Godheads. And we, we'd chant and a crowd would come around us, like 300 people. And then we'd distribute back to Godheads and everyone would give us 25 cents. <laughs> That's how we supported the movement. <laughs> and, and invariably, the police would come and arrest us. <laughs> invariably. That was, going, that was part of the Leela. So in Portland also, devotees went out to chant. Prabhupada initiated probably about 30, 40 devotees there. Lots of devotees got initiated there. Uh, Yusho Mati that lives here, she got initiated there. She was 16 years old, and she was from Montreal. And her friend, another French girl, yeah, she was 16 also. She got initiated. I got initiated there. <clears throat> um, quite a few devotees. So, yeah, we, we would go for walks with Srila Prabhupada in the park. He was there for a few days. And they have a large university in Eugene, Oregon. So uh, Donavir had organized a huge, a nice program called Bhakti Yoga. The, um, you know, the best form of yoga. <laughs> and the place was packed. It was a big auditorium on the campus, a very large university, actually. Uh, university of Oregon. It's a beautiful, wonderful university. Innumerable young people, thousands and thousands of young people. And they're all open-minded. Uh, uh, the state of Oregon is known to be a very liberal state. It's not so narrow-minded, not so many rednecks. <laughs> so anyway, Prabhupada was speaking. <laughs> he said, yoga is not for this age, he said. You're not going to really <laughs> make a lot of progress, pro you know, pushing your nose <laughs> bending your arms and twisting your body, He's speaking like this. All these young people, you know, I mean, Srila Prabhupada was very potent, very powerful. And they were listening with a drop, pin drop silence. <clears throat> and then he gave a very nice lecture. And then we had a huge kirtan with, with perhaps, I would say 500 young people in that auditorium, which is a lot for those days, maybe more, maybe a thousand, I don't know, but it was a lot, and we just had massive kirtan after that. And Prabhupada was so happy. <laughs> <It's> just <laughs> smiling. But he was grave at the airport. When we went to meet him at the airport, he was very grave, and he was saying, you know, I want my big books distributed. At that time, we weren't doing many big books. There was the Krishna book that was printed, I believe, in Japan. And then there was the Bhagavad Gita, the original Bhagavad Gita, which was large. <clears throat> And Prabhupada was 
kept telling us, I want my, my, the big books distributed. He said, those are the most important because they'll stay in someone's library for a very long time. A magazine they might discard after some time. So the emphasis was, the pressure was put on uh, big book distribution. Anyway, while Prabhu was initiating, <clears throat> he was actually giving class on the first canto. He was, t uh, Krishna um, departs for Dwarka, and in there it describes um, Maharaj Yudhisthir uh, as a great king, as a very qualified king, Raj Rishi. And Prabhupada was just talking about the real leaders of society. So there's a lot of political commentary in those classes. <clears throat> He's criticizing not modern day, you know, the presidents and the prime ministers. He's just criticizing and, you know, just really like uh, destroying them. <laughs> And um, then someone told Prabhupada during class or after class, but Prabhupada was commenting that they have, this, they have um, <clears throat> arrested these boys and girls. Downtown Portland, devotees went chanting, big kirtan, and the police arrested them and threw them in jail. <laughs> and uh, their court case was the next day. So... Um, I don't know if they got a lawyer, but when they came in front of the judge, the judge chastised the police. <laughs> he said, what, what are you doing, you nonsense? He said, these are just young religious people. Do you know what the Constitution of America is? The First Amendment is freedom of religion. It's a very strong, strong law. You can't persecute uh, religious people. That's the whole America was founded on this idea of religious freedom and freedom of expression, freedom of religion, and so on. So he chastised the police and he threw the, he threw the case out, case dismissed. And Prabhupada was saying, why, why are they harassing these boys and girls? I mean, we were all like kids. I was 20, just 20 years old. Uh, a lot of us were 16, 17 years old. And uh, I said, why are they you know, harassing these young boys, he's very annoyed, very annoyed by this. So what are we doing? We're simply trying to spread love of God, you know. What are they doing wrong? You know, go arrest some criminals. <laughs> Lots of criminals in America. <laughs> Lots. <laughs> so um, that was the mood of Srila Prabhupada uh, there. And um, unfortunately, it's five past nine, and they usually want to lock the door and clean up here, so... Uh, we can have some more proper uh, kata. <clears throat> it was very nice there, though. It was very, very nice um, time. We did kirtan in the park and so on. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. All glories to Srila Prabhupada.